before I take you through this PPT, just uh, Professor Fong wanted to brief you on blended learning. Generally, I have two to three points on this. How do we define e-learning? Any just one or two lines of definition from Ibarent? Generally, we define e-learning using ICTs uh, for teaching and learning, you know. But my understanding of uh, e-learning is somewhat different. See, uh, in any technology or tool we are going to use, we need to identify the pedagogical value of that tool. After all, all these technologies or tools are enablers. Ultimately, it is in our or your hand to design the learning experience for your students. How to enhance their learning experience, that is very important using either LMS or any tech tools or if you are on to develop an interactive video also, how to engage. So I have uh, try to remember the, the E in e-learning in these terms. So I prefer to use this E for extended learning and enhanced learning and engagement, excitement and empowerment and so on. Do you have any other E for this E, e for this E in E learning other than this extended, enhanced, engagement, excitement and all? Enlightened. Yeah, enlightened. So what all you want? So this is if you think in student perspective, then you will get all this. If you think in teacher perspective, then we can say E education. So we use variant terms for e-learning, online learning, ICT enabled learning, technology enabled learning. There our focus should be on how to transform teaching from teacher centric to learner centric. That is very important. So what do you mean by extended learning? Extending student learning opportunities beyond the classroom. We all know we have limited time, time constraint. So we, we cannot address all the, uh, how many students generally you have? Average student strength is? Yeah, 100. 100 students learning needs, we may not address their learning challenges. So, why can't we use this technology to extend their learning experience beyond in the classroom? Second one is enhanced learning. How do we enhance? So, in the classroom generally I deliver something, you also will uh, start boring after 30 minutes if I go on delivering like this, okay? So, in order to enhance their learning experience, we use multimedia. We can embed multimedia in the LMS so that we can enhance and enrich their learning experience. And the third part, this is very important, engagement part. So we need to engage in active and interactive, reflective, collaborative and constructive learning. So how we are going to use all these Moodle modules to engage students, that is important. And excitement, whether we are going to, our the designed learning experience is going to excite students, then only we can motivate them. That is very important. And final E is empowerment. Empower students so, so that they can learn from anywhere, anytime and at any pace, in any path and using any device. So generally we say be by body, bring your own device. So this flexibility should be there for students. So we need to design students learning experience by blending all these E's. So what are five E's in addition to that you said something enlightenment. So blend all these E's. We generally say blended learning, the definition of blended learning is you combine face to face with technology. But you combine face to face technology with all these E's. Then only we can engage students in active, collaborative, reflective, constructive, all kinds of learning process and enrich their learning experience. Ultimately, the final aim is to improve their learning outcomes, okay? And we need to design students' learning experience by blending all these E's. We have started with your blended course design. So now our role is not only teacher, a facilitator, our role is instructional designer or learning designer. So you have already assumed that role. So I think 19, how many of you are here? Who didn't submit, uh, by the, <laughs> who didn't submit that blended uh, course design document? I received 19 uh, design documents. Who didn't submit that? 
we will take up that activities, <laughs> do not hesitate, anyway first day activities that only, we will focus on that only. I should appreciate your work, really. So in two days you picked up everything, first, first day who submitted, based on my feedback uh, to their uh, blended uh, design documents, everyone picked up, done a good job, <laughs> okay. Uh, so now we have assumed the role of instructional designer. No need to have a certificate on instructional designer. Once we start blending all these technologies and tools for creating pedagogically sound courses, that is our final objective. How to bring in that pedagogical, uh, what do we call, richness to our course. So first we need to identify the pedagogical value of any technology or tool, that is very important. How many of you heard of TPAC? Punya Mishra's and all, okay, you uh, might have done the course offered by Commonwealth of Learning, there all these are the technology, pedagogical and content knowledge, TPAC, Punya Mishra and others. Generally pedagogy, what do you mean by pedagogy? We generally define it as uh, an art and science of uh, um, teaching, or teaching strategies, but my definition of this is Uh, it is an art of designing enhanced learning experience. How to enhance like learning experience using all these technologies and all, everything is in our hands. Do not think technology is something, uh, it is a very difficult or challenging to learn. It is a matter of practice, that is it. Daily spend 1 to 2 hours on uh, understanding Moodle, play around with all those Moodle tools and modules. It is not a rocket science. In 6 months, once you complete this project for this, I think six month project, then you will become as Professor Fong or your university is expecting, you will become mentors, okay. A across Malaysia, you can also organize these kind of workshops, two day, three day, five day. If you want to organize this kind of, I have schedule for one day, two day, three day, four day, five day. So you can reuse all my content. So I generally release all my content with a CCB by license. You can make money out of all these workshops also, I do not mind. <laughs> Just keep sharing what are you learn here, first start uh, sharing across your university, then beyond your university you can share all these experience. And I have seen uh, in your tell policy, it talks about innovative teaching learning practices. What do you mean by innovation? So that we need to understand. Any innovation should address either a problem or a challenge. So try to identify what are the challenges students face in their learning. First identify for that how can we use technology to provide solution to their learning challenges. So that is very important. So any questions on what is blended learning? Do not simply have that blending face to face with technology. How to blend all these 5 or 6 E's, if you have any other E also, we will add that E. By, uh, by the end of this workshop, we will add one or, or if you come up with 10 more E's also, we will have students perspective in mind that that is, okay. Student engagement is important, then only we can enhance their learning experience and uh, we will improve their learning outcome. Any questions on this blended learning? Yeah, please. Sorry? Uh -huh. We do not have a policy as such. So, fortunately, we have Commonwealth of Learning or SEMCA to support all such initiatives. So, I have been involved almost in SEMCA's one, two, two projects. One is at Central University of Himachal Pradesh, uh, the other is University of Hyderabad, that is also another central university. Third one was Triple IT Andhra Pradesh. So, uh, we have completed this project successfully over there, so, including impact study, impact study is also <coughs> over. Uh, in our uh, IBS campuses, uh, adoption rate is not that good because uh, uh, top level management, they do not really understand. What are the benefits of? I have been insisting on formulating an e-learning policy, then only we can enforce 
and we uh, I have been requesting them we link it up with the performance appraisal of our faculty members. Since 2012 I have been uh, insisting on this but uh, my resource is have patience. <laughs> we cannot uh, enforce this. Uh, so. so faculty members you know across, no, across the globe not only in India are pampered like anything. So. <laughs> Scenarios are more or less similar. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, How do you account for this statement? No many people coming on board, even though a lot of benefits that will come up from that is there, but not many people are coming interested. Mm. They, they feel it's uh, like uh, they don't think it's an uh, integral part of their teaching. That that's uh, problem is with the it's a mindset with the with their mindset. Those who have already identified now, they are taking my support. Recently, we started developing an online uh, writing lab. I never expected this from our faculty members. Those who are teaching soft skills and business communication, now they came up uh, with this idea. Will you provide support for developing an online writing lab? So I provided support. I have identified again this. I am saying insisting on this pedagogical value. So they wanted to create some uh, learning experience too. I have identified some Moodle modules. Now I am using that for them. Say for example, they wanted to have peer learning, peer rating. So workshop is there. For that, again, faculty members, they need to define the criteria for peer rating. So among these two faculty members, one, uh, she has shown interest. In one day, she sent me that criteria. So we could use workshop module for that. So we need to identify that pedagogical enrichment also in that tool or module or anything. Even web two tools, social media also we can use. I have contributed, I think, almost seven uh, distance education learning SLM we call self-learning material for PG diploma in education technology. One unit is on social media in higher education. It's actually they need uh, almost uh, for full fledged training they need at least uh, one month training to integrate all. Guys. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, it's an initiative. I am there. I am there to take you to the next level. Provided I should. Uh, I could sense that passion in all of you. So I am ready to uh, spend time with you daily one hour if you want to have either a Zoom meeting or Skype meeting or anything. But please, that should be reflected on your course pages. Something I want to transform. I am not saying uh, bring in 100% transformation in one level or in, uh, in one semester. Okay. Yeah, one, one uh, big difference or one advantage, it's 100% uh, uh, driven by the community. That is the only advantage I could say. Uh, you can uh, say Blackboard, or, uh, it's a free and open source that we know. It's community driven. If you register yourself on Moodle.org and post any query, within 24 hours you get answer, at least from one. I used to respond to many queries these days I am not finding time, it's a time is a big constraint. Tonight again I need to remix a video and submit to our Ministry of HRD, they are launching uh, online uh, refresher courses for faculty members. They asked me to contribute 30 minute video, uh, using screencast matic only I have self recorded, but they want a, what do you call that setup. So last weekend I went to one of our agriculture institutions, they have full fledged education lab. I got everything. Now, I, tonight I need to remix and uh, submit all three videos to that. So, do not think it is a, a burden or you are overloaded. It is a one time investment. So, every semester uh, you can take the backup of your uh, course. For the next batch, you can reuse the same course. No need to develop the same course again and again. Just some additions or deletions, updates, that is it. We will also learn how to take the backup of your course. It is very important. Okay.